So, good morning, everyone. My name is Roberto Sasso. I'm a, a security engineer at <coughs> engineer at Huawei, and I work mostly on IMA and um, TPM. Today, I would like to present a, a simple protocol for remote attestation, where simple means that it is simple to understand for the user, but uh, the solution itself is uh, uh, very complex. And uh, the, I think the complexity does not derive from uh, calling the uh, TSS, but the real problem is to find um, a state where the system uh, is trusted to um, uh, to behave uh, as expected, to do to perform the task in a in a good way. So first, I will talk about uh, the problem that we are trying to solve, some background information, our proposal, and the conclusion. So remote attestation is the process to uh, verify whether um, the system uh, can accomplish uh, its task as expected. But the evaluation of the operating system integrity is uh, very complex because um, um, uh, reference management and public verification services are not uh, available. And also because uh, it is unclear which information must be included in the measurement list and how this, this information should be uh, verified. Also, uh, remote decision is very difficult to integrate into a product because uh, a dedicated server must be added in the infrastructure to do the uh, remote attestation. And there are, uh, and we need uh, also to in, uh, implement two separate protocols, one for remote attestation and one for secure communication. So in trusted computing, the integrity is the process of um, um, evaluating whether a, a, a system or application behave um, uh, as intended by the software de developer. And the measurements start from the core, core root of trust uh, of um, uh, measurement, which is the, uh, usually the CPU. And um, uh, the measurement process uh, is done until the uh, application. At the operating system level, uh, uh, the me measurement is done by um, uh, integrity measurement architecture. And the evaluation is done by comparing actual measurement with um, a reference measurement. So we have two types of remote attestation, one explicit and one implicit. Um, explicit remote attestation. So, um, I'm a, um, um, so we have an initial um, value of the uh, platform uh, configuration register, which stores the system state. This is initialized to zero, and when IMA uh, starts to measure, uh, uh, to perform measurements, then uh, IMA calls TPM PCR extend, and then the uh, PCR, current PCR values is uh, updated with the hash of uh, the current value plus the, uh, the, the digest of the measurement. This process is done uh, for each uh, entry that is added to the measurement list. Later, we have a verifier which want to um, attest the, the system. And so there is a remote attestation agent running in the, in the system which provides uh, uh, both the measurement list and also assigned uh, uh, PCR. The verifier then uh, replicated the, the same operation that was done by the, uh, the TPM in order to see if the measurement list was uh, uh, tampered with. And then if uh, uh, the, the measurement list is, uh, is good, then it compares the measurement inside, uh, inside uh, with a reference measurement. And if everything is, uh, is known, is recognized, then the verifiers uh, um, uh, determine that the system is, uh, uh, is good. With implicit remote attestation, instead, uh, is a bit different. So we have, uh, um, uh, first we generate a TPM key, which is sealed to the um, desired system state. Later, the uh, PCR is um, uh, populated, is updated uh, as soon as uh, um, IMA um, uh, creates uh, new uh, add new measurement to the, to the list. And the uh, remote attestation consists uh, instead of um, uh, establishing a secure communication uh, mm, between the management system and the local system. Uh, and uh, only if uh, the, state, the current state is the, uh, the same of uh, uh, the state that was uh, used for the sealing policy of the key, then uh, uh, the secure communication is uh, uh, established. And so uh, the, this uh, remote attestation is implicit because uh, uh, the fact that it's possible to establish a communication means that the system was in, a, in, in, the, in the desired state. So the remaining task for the verifier is to, to check uh, if uh, the state that was uh, um, uh, set in the sealing policy is, is a good state. 
So we see that uh, simple, uh, the uh, implicit remoteization is uh, easier, uh, is more suitable for integration into a product because every, uh, the product uh, uses um, uh, secure, com uh, secure communication, so it is easy, easier to integrate the remote attestation into this uh, existing protocol. Uh, so we require to switch from software key to TPM key and also an additional verification of the certificate which um, tells if the, the key that is used for TLS is a TPM key and is sealed to the uh, good state. Problem is that the IMA PCR is not predictable because uh, uh, the final value of the, the PCR depends on which file has um, been me measured and, uh, and also the temporal sequence. Um, so our solution, so we want to, uh, to, you to implement uh, implicit rem remote attestation and to do this, we have to make the IMA PCR predictable. To do this, uh, we have two uh, new concepts. One is called the IMA digest list, and the second one is an enhanced version of uh, policy in the reduced integrity measurement architecture uh, to handle mutable files. Digest list. So normally, uh, when a file is assessed by, uh, in the system, then IMA always uh, put the measurement in the, in the measurement list. With our approach, before at kernel initialization time, we uh, preload a, a white list in, in the kernel with all the reference measurement. For example, here we have a bin bash. And uh, so when a bash is assessed, then uh, IMA checks first if the actual di di digest is in the white list. And uh, if it is the white list, then it does not perform any, does not add the measurement in the list. Otherwise, if the file is, uh, is unknown, then the file is added to the, to the list. So in this way, the only measurement that, uh, that we should have if all files are recognized will be only the measurement of the white list. But unfortunately, um, uh, we, we, have a, um, we have some uh, unrecognized files, which are the mutable files. So those files change um, uh, during the, uh, when the system is being used. So um, we cannot uh, really uh, compare mutable files with reference measurement. Uh, an alternative approach would be not to uh, look into the content of the mutable file, but instead uh, uh, look into which process are writing mutable files. Because if all the process that uh, update mutable files are in a good state, then we can conclude that the mutable file is good, and then we can exclude this mutable file from a, a measurement. However, if we measure the whole system, the problem is that we, end up, we may end up uh, um, trusting uh, also applications which are uh, poorly written then uh, are most susceptible to, to attacks. And then the real state of the system, so we, we have a, a system which is good for the verifier because all the, 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 the digests are recognized. But in fact, the um, uh, insecure application is um, injecting a malicious sequence of uh, byte into mutable files, and this can be used to exploit existing vulnerabilities in the, uh, other processes. So what we are uh, proposing uh, is to um, um, isolate the portion of the, uh, the system that uh, um, uh, perf will perform critical operation and uh, um, try to protect this with a mandatory access control. Uh, so here, um, um, so we are uh, using, a, um, for example, we can use a C Linux or uh, Osmark. And uh, uh, so if uh, mutable files are included in the, uh, in the TCB, in the Trusted Computing Base, then uh, um, we, we achieve the, our objective, because uh, uh, if only mutable, uh, mutable files can be written only by the TCB, then uh, mutable files are, uh, are good. So the mandatory access control is enforcing an uh, integrity policy such as Biva or uh, Clark Wilson. And uh, the insecure app in this case is left outside the, the TCB, so it cannot inject a malicious sequence of, uh, of byte. And the mandatory as control and integrity policy will be uh, included in the evidence that is sent to the verifier uh, during remote attestation. So this solution has been proposed by uh, Trent Jagger uh, and uh, is called the policy reduced integrity measurement architecture. So about the integrity policy. We, the Biva model is not very flexible because it does not allow a um, uh, high integrity subject uh, to read a low integrity object. And a low integrity ob, uh, sub, um, and, and does not allow a low integrity subject to, to write a um, high integrity object. 
So this is not uh, very flexible. Uh, instead, the Clark Wilson model uh, allow um, um, uh, subject, uh, high integrity subject uh, to read a low integrity object if the code is uh, robust enough to handle also uh, malicious, potentially malicious uh, uh, data. So policy reduced integrity um, uh, measurement architecture uh, seems the right solution to address the issue of uh, mutable files so that if uh, we address this, uh, uh, our, um, uh, the IMA PCR will be uh, fully predictable. However, there are um, uh, some issues because um, it's not very practical. Um, so finding a TCB in, a, in, a, in the Linux policy is difficult because um, uh, the generic policy takes into account all possible application usage scenarios, so there are uh, a lot of uh, permission to, to consider, and then it's very difficult to find a, a portion of the system can, which is isolated from the rest of, of, of the system. And also, when, uh, if we are able to find a TCB inside the Linux policy, um, uh, this, um, this uh, TCB cannot be um, reused directly in uh, other uh, scenario, but must be adapted because the application that are used may be, uh, uh, they are different. Also, um, uh, Prima does not uh, take into account uh, um, offline, uh, offline attacks. So we try and we, so we, we are going into the, uh, the path of uh, making um, um, Prima uh, practical. And to do that, we are, uh, um, instead of considering the world's Linux policy, we are considering uh, uh, only um, the process interaction. So in the Linux policy, we have 100,000 rules, and we saw that uh, only 2.5% of this policy is really used in a, in, in a system. So it will be much easier to find a TCB if we consider a process interaction. Also, we want to um, um, protect against uh, offline attacks, for example, with uh, IMA appraiser and uh, EVM, because um, one uh, problem that we have is that uh, when uh, we reboot the system, we don't know if the protection, uh, um, the Selenux protection was en enabled in the, previous, uh, in the previous boot. So this is um, um, for uh, the reduction of the DCB, so we are using a process interaction, and this is an information flow ana analysis uh, for um, the SSH server. So SSH server is able to read the uh, private key and also configuration file, but it's also able to read the Kerberos uh, 5 configuration file, which according to the policy can be written also by uh, uh, RealmD and FTPD. So if we want to have a TCB and we, don't, we, uh, we want to not have an integrity violation, we need to add this uh, subject to the TCB, RAMD and FATPD. And uh, we can also exclude this, uh, this subject if we make the assumption that uh, uh, this uh, Kerberos 5 is not used. But this is a manual process that requires a lot of effort. If instead we consider process interaction, we see if the SSH server is uh, uh, reading Kerberos 5, and then if uh, uh, um, there is no record uh, of the read, we can automatically exclude the uh, um, Kerberos 5 um, subject, and then the, uh, the analysis uh, is done. So, um, we solved the problem of the uh, practicality of uh, the information flow analysis, so uh, I think we, uh, we could be able, but with the process interaction, to find a, a TCB that uh, um, satisfy uh, Clark Wilson requirements. Now the remaining uh, um, problems that we have to, um, to solve is uh, the offline attack. So what we want to do is uh, uh, to, to know uh, um, if um, mutable files were always protected uh, uh, by mandatory access control. Uh, currently, uh, this is not possible because uh, uh, the VM key is not sealed uh, to the uh, operating system. So it's, it's sealed, uh, can be sealed only uh, with, uh, um, until, until the kernel because the PCR is not predictable. Um, so basically what the change that we are doing is uh, to uh, modify the sealing policy and we consider also uh, the operating system. So we want to seal a key that uh, can be sealed, uh, can be unsealed only if uh, the Selenux, uh, Selenux is enabled, and also the integrity policy is uh, is, um, is enforced. And uh, 
which means that when we, we boot the system, we have a, um, uh, we check if uh, the protection is en enabled and then the key can be unsealed. But then when we have a valid edge Mac, uh, so if uh, the, the, the key is not available, um, ob obviously uh, IMA cannot um, uh, produce a valid edge Mac. So we have, when instead we have a valid edge Mac, this means that the key has been unsealed and then the file was created when the protection was enabled. And this is uh, what we needed to, in order to uh, exclude the file from measurement because we know uh, that uh, the file was updated by the TCB. So now we have the last step to make the uh, IMA uh, PCR predictable. Currently, we don't take into account the validity of the HMAC in order to see if we should measure the file. But now that the, the key is sealed to the operating system, we can uh, exclude the file uh, from measurement. So finally, we have a, me a measurement list in which we have the, the white list, so which code, which file we, we allow to, uh, to be uh, assessed, and also the integrity policy that, that uh, um, is enforced in, in the system. So since we are sealing the, the key to the OS, we are also able to find if there was a corruption in the previous reboot. So we have an untrusted administrator that, um, for example, uh, it may try a different type of attack. It may try to, um, to use an EVM key which is not sealed to, uh, to the operating system. But what we do is uh, to uh, include in the measurement list also uh, the parameter that were used to, uh, uh, to seal the key. Then the verifier is able to identify that the key is not good, is not, um, um, is not associated to the, to the good system. So the system does not pass uh, the, the verification. And also, uh, the DPM 2.0 allows uh, um, uh, people to seal, uh, uh, to, um, seal a key which is internally gener generated in the, in the TPM, uh, which means that the key is never uh, under control of the administrator unless uh, the system is in a good state. So we generate a good uh, EVM key, and then um, uh, we are, um, this is done by a system which can be also potentially compromised because the TPM uh, uh, protects is a tamper uh, resistant, so the key is inside the chip and uh, is not uh, available. So in the first boot, we, um, uh, we run the good system with the, the uh, malware control protection enabled. Then key, the key can be unsealed. And then uh, the system is trying to write a mutable file. But at some point, uh, we have an attack. Attack means that uh, for example, a file was not in the, in the whitelist, or uh, there is an inter integrity viol violation, for example, a, um, a process outside the TCB is trying to write a mutable file inside the TCB. Then the VM key is, uh, is, is deleted, which means that the system is no longer able to uh, produce valid HMAC. So when we reboot the system, this is the good system is, uh, try, is uh, assessing the, the mutable file, but does not have a valid HMAC, which means that uh, this will be included in the measurement list because uh, we, we measure all files which have uh, invalid in HMAC or, or missing HMAC. And, this, and then also the system uh, does not pass the, verif the verification. But the attack does, did not happen in the current boot. It happened in the previous boot. But for the, uh, by the fact that um, uh, the HMAC was not calculated correctly in the previous boot, then we are able to detect this. So the last uh, option is that the system was in a good state during the, the, the first boot. So the system was able to calculate the valid HMAC. And then when the system rebooted, then uh, the system is able to, uh, to read, uh, read the mutable file with the, the good HMAC. And then the, the, the measurement list is still uh, um, uh, is good because it contains um, the, digest, the, the white list and, the, the, and the, uh, the good EVM key. So the, the verification only in this case is successful. And as you see, we have only static measurements. So we don't have a measurement of mutable file. We don't have a, a, any, any other measurement. 
And this is what we needed to do, the implicit remote attestation, because the key uh, can be seeded only to, uh, uh, fix, uh, um, um, uh, only to one state. So if the state of the t in, uh, in the TPM is different, then the key, the, the key cannot be used. So for implicit uh, remote attestation, we have now two possibilities for uh, uh, the, the verification. So um, the, the target system first create a certificate signing request, and as part of this, also send the event log and the components which were um, 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 uh, assessed, were used in the, in the system. And then the first option is that when uh, the, the, the CA uh, gets the certificate signing request, it also, it also performs the uh, verification of uh, uh, the sealing policy uh, used for the, the key. And if the ceiling policy is acceptable, then uh, it sign the certificate and return it to the, uh, to the target system. So when the implicit remote attestation uh, uh, is done, so we establish a TLS protocol, the uh, management system uh, receives the certificate uh, from, the, uh, from the target system and then get uh, from the issuer, uh, he, he can trust uh, just the, uh, the, the CA and the verification terminates uh, here. The other option is that uh, the, uh, the verifier gets also the measurement log and the, the list of all components, extract from the certificate the sealing policy of, of the key, and then it can perform the, the verification of, uh, of this uh, sealing policy. So now a uh, few information about uh, the implementation. So the InfoFlow LSM uses the two detect the process interaction and to enforce the uh, integrity um, uh, constraint. So we have the Selenux policy, we have um, uh, an interaction between the SSH server and the, so it's trying to read the private key. And uh, we, InfoFlow LSM, we are uh, intercepting this, uh, this request and we are recording this, this interaction. The interaction is exported in uh, user space so that we have all the list of operations that were uh, performed by the system. Later, so we have to identify the, to find the TCB uh, of, uh, of the system. So the, the administrator um, pass the discovery uh, interaction to the information flow analyzer. And then the analyzer perform the, the analysis. So it tries to identify uh, the, uh, the TCB of the system, which meet the requirements of uh, BIBA or Clark Wilson. The output of the, the analyzer is the, uh, the list of uh, trusted in the subject uh, and object in the, in the TCP. During the deployment phase, we, we have Selenium, which is initialized with a, with a policy. When there is now uh, uh, the, the SSH server uh, is trying to read the private key, the first uh, uh, operation that we do is to determine if the subject is in the TC and the object are in the TCP or not. It's the same of uh, 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 what Matthew Garak uh, explained. So um, they are using the, uh, the EVM extended attribute. Instead, we have a list of, um, of subject and object in the, in the TCP. So we are doing it in a slightly different way. If the object is in the TCP, then we have to check uh, to do the validation of, uh, uh, of the metadata. So we check if the label attached to the, to the file is uh, um, uh, uh, has not been uh, modified, so that we, we, are, we are sure that the label that is attached to the, to the uh, I node and to the process is uh, uh, the expected one. And then we enforce, uh, we enforce the integrity policy. So if um, uh, the subject is in the TCP, it can read only uh, object in the TCP. Last step. If the subject in the, is in the TCP, since we have to uh, also um, provide uh, which code has been executed a part of the TCP, with IMA, we, um, uh, we measure the, the code and the immutable files. Now, uh, as I said, mutable files, we protect them with uh, the, the um, uh, integrity policy. So in this case, we are not, uh, uh, we are not using an IMA policy in the sense that we provide the list of subjects in the TCP, but uh, the, the filtering, so which uh, subject but must be measured, is, this information is provided by the InfoFlow LSM. So we have the audit uh, uh, match, and uh, 
uh, it is the new LSM which tells to IMA which, um, uh, which uh, files should be measured. We have some uh, source code uh, for, the, for the digest list. Uh, this is available in our uh, GitHub account. Also, we built some uh, binary packages for uh, uh, testing the feature more easily. And um, um, we also provide uh, an overview of, uh, of the feature in the uh, Trusted Computing Group uh, uh, developer portal. So remote attestation is not widely uh, used because um, um, because evaluating the, uh, the integrity of the operating system is very, very complex. And also, we have the requirement of uh, adding a, a dedicated server, an additional protocol, uh, in order to have a remote attestation in a, in a, in a product. So the solution would be to use instead uh, implicit remote attestation. But the problem is that uh, currently the IMA PCR is not predictable. And if we want to protect uh, mutable files with a TCB, this is currently not very, very easy because the Linux policy is very, is very big. So we propose a solution that is uh, comprehensive. So we are uh, taking into account uh, uh, mutable files, uh, and um, uh, that now is a uh, now is a is a is a problem because there are unknown digests in the measurement list. So we we fix the, the this issue, and also our solution is more practical because uh, uh, with implicit remote attestation. Uh, the integration into a product is very easy. And we are using this uh, solution in the future TPM Euro European project. That's it. Questions? So I was just curious, um, no arguments that the Fedora um, SE Linux policy is quite large. It's mm -hmm. a general purpose policy, right? It's meant yeah, for yeah, everything. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, did you investigate, you know, customizing that policy to shrink it down to alleviate some of those problems? Uh, so, um, I know that there are booleans, for example, that allows to um, uh, disable some rules. Uh, I, I did even more. I tried to uh, modify the security server in order to um, um, uh, to select only the part of the policy that uh, was uh, um, um, queried by the, uh, the LSM. And uh, we, we, we saw that um, even in, in this case there were um, very generic rules. For example, there was a, um, a rule that allows a, um, the um, PAM uh, agent to read the, the log file, but then there was another gener more generic rule which allowed every domain to read the log file. And so this is uh, uh, make the information flow analysis very complex because then uh, uh, you have um, uh, an interaction not only from the file which should be able to read, uh, to write the, uh, the log file, but also from any other domain uh, included. Um, uh, so any type which is uh, part of the attribute domain. Yeah, I guess and that, that was my question. Like, did you consider changing, you know, going beyond Booleans, but actually, you know, replacing some of the policy modules with some of your own that would, you know, remove some of these accesses that you didn't want? Mm -hmm. um, I, I thought that um, uh, adding something on top of, uh, on top of uh, uh, the enforcement of Selenux was more easier because so you leave the policy as it is, and then you just uh, use the part uh, that, that you need. Uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for the information flow analysis. It is possible to modify the policy, but uh, also the problem is uh, what also Matthew Garrett uh, mentioned, that uh, we want that the solution is uh, easy to understand uh, by, by people. Uh, so having uh, um, only few interactions to analyze, um, I think is, uh, makes the solution more uh, practical. More questions? Not let's thank a speaker. Thank you.